All right, lift is my life. What is the hardest thing mentally about prepping? Hardest thing mentally about prepping is definitely keeping you sane with just food, with people around you, you know. Um, this last prep was, was, was pretty tough, but I got through it and it was okay. Uh, it was definitely better than my previous prep because I had a lot more supporters. My brother was, was my basically third eye, so it helped a lot. But the hardest thing is definitely keeping him in town, living in check at all times. Keeping you sane. Like in uh, like moody type of way? Or yeah, like yeah, definitely in your moods. Um, there was days where I kind of just like was mad for no reason. But you know, just keeping that in mind and keeping the goal in mind as you prep. If you're prepping, keep that going, my guys. All right, ready to go? Lord. Big shout out to Lawrence, making all types of games over hey. there. Ready to go, man. All right. Did you ever binge during your prep, or was there a point where it was way too hard? If so, what was the lowest macros? Yeah, there was definitely a night when I binge. Um, I worked out here. In, uh, I work at Mountain View, guys, near Goal, uh, Google, Goal's gym here in Google, near Google headquarters, and I have a client who works at Google. Um, we'll never forget it. I was training him, and then we went to Google, and he showed me the Google company and how all the food, and I personally just couldn't take it anymore, so I just ate, I remember I ate Sun Chips, ate a cupcake, ate a burrito after that, and then ate a taco. So all that, but you know, um, I think I had, that was, that was the day, but then after that, it was just, I think it was back to normal. I told you about it and everything. And yeah, definitely. Uh, the lowest macros, I think, it wasn't even that low. I was still at 35 fats, about 30, 35 to 40 fats, um, 200 carbs, 165 to 170 protein. So macros weren't that low this season, but I was just not mentally there at that time. So. All right. Javier Fabre? Yeah. Okay. Why are your legs, calves, and arm measurements? Um, I didn't measure my calves, so I forgot about that. But my legs. <laughs> We're at 27 and a half, I think. 27 and a half or 28. My arms are at 15 halves. So. 15 halves. Not, the, not the too big yet. All right. Next question from Get Em J. Hey, John. How do you get in all the jeans? Hey, man. I don't, I don't, I don't use jeans that much. Um, I'm mostly sweats and uh, gym shorts. We shout out to you, John. Wear jeans here. All right. Lion River. Thoughts on mini cuts during off season. Definitely. Um, thoughts on mini cuts enough. So I think it's needed. Um, of course, don't get to the shredded mode. Um, this contest, I mean, if you're going to have a long off season, take probably six weeks. Just, just cut, get some body fat down, look good for a little bit, look good for the beach, and then just come back harder. Um, I think it's needed so you can minimize that body fat, and you can also just feel better with mentally and your self-confidence. Because so, you don't want to keep bulking up without cutting and then just keep getting bigger but you look fatter and fatter and you feel bad and you don't see the point of or like working out anymore and that's another thing it's a mini cut don't mini shred right 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 that's the uh, thing yeah, don't do that so it's a mini cut don't freaking cut for like 12 14 weeks and then be in contest shape for no reason not worth it next question from mikey likes twice i noticed your your videos you use to lock your movement when you did Wendler, for example, out more. You know, when you lock out more movement, when did you decide to change that? Um, decided to change it when I was in a push pull leg, I think, or uh, upper lower as well. Um, why? It's because I just feel like, especially for bench press and all that, sometimes I just feel it more on my chest when I'm doing, not when I don't lock out all the way. Um, there's still, I mean, of course, there's still times when I do walk out just to finish that tricep movement as well. But mostly whenever I do those compound movements, I try to focus on what major muscle group I'm working compared to just the accessory muscles. So, but yeah. Try it out. Yeah. Uh, Rick Sohn. ASL. Single. Not serious. Ricky Sohn. ASL. Single. Not serious. I don't know what that means, but... I am single and ready to mingle. Feel me. <laughs> Alright, next question from Alex Carey. Are you gonna do a piloting meet anytime soon? No, not anytime soon, Alex. Um, don't know when, don't know what, but we'll see in the future. Alright, from Anton the Trainer. What is your favorite lift? Favorite lift? It has to be the deadlift right now. Um, still trying to chase 500 pull. Um, 
that's my main movement. Love it. I deadlift twice a week. I'm loving it, so. Deadlift it is, man. Deadlift it is. It was squat, but then now it's deadlift. How about you, bro? That was hard. It was really bench press for a while, but we recently moved to the UFC gym. The bench, I'm still getting used to that. Um, and that's really hard. I've been really falling in love with a lap pull down. Seriously. But out of the three movements, I'd say, I'd say deadlifts too. It's been really good since the UFC gym. We could really use the bumper weights and just really drop in and focus. Yeah. All right, from Adam Athlete. What do you say is the biggest thing you learned this year? The biggest thing I learned this year, overall in general or in just fitness, uh, let's say in life, I remember that um, you gotta be happy with you, you're hard before you can be happy with someone else. Um, in fitness, I learned that if you want it bad enough, you can get whatever you want um, in terms of career or just shred mode because I've never been that shredded. I've never seen like lower ab veins, like veins out and everything and this year I really put my mind into my prep mode and yeah, I think that's what I learned man. And hard work pays off no matter what at the end. It's a big year for you. Yeah, big year, big year for me guys. Alright, from Ilu Fonte. Ilu Fonte, big shout out to Evan Lou. All right. How beneficial, beneficial do you think increasing your body fat bulking is, and what is the extent does it have the mission returns? Um, in my opinion, personally, is that I think body fat is okay for you to gain, especially during your off season or your bulk. I feel like when there's a diminishing return is when it starts messing with your mental. Um, when you don't see the cuts that you want to see, or when you start seeing too much fat gain and you lose that motivation. Going back to what I was saying before, um, you got to remember. Most of us do this not just because it's a passion, but it's also because of what we want to look like aesthetics wise, you know? And once you lose that 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 motivation, that dream of looking aesthetic, then that might discourage you to continue lifting, which which in return is just de degressing uh, progression from there, which which is not too what you want. So I think as long as you're mentally there and you know how much body fat you have, then it's fine. But this diminishing return, in my opinion, is when it starts messing with your mental state. Definitely, and uh, yeah, well, and like anytime you do gain fat, that's why the benefit of doing a powerlifting meet. Because yes, powerlifting meet, you're not looking for aesthetics, but you know you still have a goal. So you get what kind of said. If you have a really high fat percentage, body fat percentage, it's gonna be hard for you to keep that aesthetic mindset. Right, so just use that as powerless. Just use powerlifting as another set yep. of goal, so that you do powerlifting as a goal when you're off season, when you're fat mode, I guess. And contest day, that's when you're in prep mode. So two different things are two things you can use. All right. Next question from Love Always Gigi. Gigi, yeah. Big shout out to Gigi. All right. How did you say motivated when you were cutting? Also, I miss you. Love. Me see too, GG. Um, come out to the UFC gym or text me and everyone work out. Um, I don't understand motivated throughout the dieting, throughout the comps. Um, just definitely seeing progress every week. Um, I was able to take pictures this year. Um, I wish I had this camera, but <laughs> um, I was able to take more pictures this year of each and every week progress and seeing the numbers change and seeing more shredded, um, seeing more shredded glutes on my sides, shredded hamstrings. It's just more and more of that that keeps me addicted to what I was doing. Um, I think keep chasing to see what I can do, what I can do, where I can, how far I can push my body. So that's what kept me motivated. And yeah, yeah. All right, there's another one from Evan again. Ilu Fate. Who who's gonna win the race to 405 squat? Ready to go or miss a GQ? Alright, um, a lot of you guys aren't following me on Instagram, but if you are, um, you know that me, myself, Mr. GQ, which is a good friend of mine, Nate, Lawrence, ready to go, another good friend, and uh, Louie, goes to Speed X Racer, he's also, we're all chasing 405 squat, and so far I feel like I think Lawrence and uh, Nate, and even Louie, they're probably going to get it for me. Um, my squat progression hasn't been very well, but yeah, I think that's what I think, so. We so, can't see all so, you guys right there. So you know dump three. So you're you're pulling out of the competition? I'm not pulling out of the competition. I'm just saying I'm gonna give those guys a headshot right now. I'll be the 
I mean the, the the turtle in the back winning at the end of the race. We'll see. Difficult part of your last cut. Most difficult part or my last part is keeping the relationship sane. Um, this past contest prep, I was with I was in a relationship with someone, and I think that was pretty hard. Um, definitely would want to be with someone else who would understand that. I guess um, there were some rough patches, but they helped me through it. But I think that was the last. Uh, I think that was the hardest part: keeping emotionally being there for somebody when you're trying to be emotionally there for yourself during your prep. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, guys. So thank you guys for watching the video. Um, if you guys have any more questions, please feel free to comment below. Um, big thanks to everyone who actually asked the question. Um, Could not have done it with you guys. Uh, much love to everyone out there. Yeah. And catch you guys in the next video. God bless, guys.